All right, what's happening, everyone? Uh, welcome to this Sunday's art, live art stream. Uh, <laughs> I haven't quite figured out what to call it at this point, even though I've been doing this for, uh, she's almost a year now. Um, my name is Eben, and uh, today I thought I would dive in to some photos. I actually went for a walk yesterday, and I am... Um, I grabbed a, I snapped a lot of um, photos of the landscape around, uh, around my uh, where I live here in Vermont. I uh, went for a nice walk outside, which is something if you're looking for photo references or something to use for your artwork, I encourage you uh, to give that a try. And uh, welcome, uh, Sabrina. Welcome, Elvie. Welcome, Keldar. Uh, hello, hello. Welcome, Frederick. I don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome, Wurzel. Welcome, Jose. Nice. We've got... Uh, people are on top of it today. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, sometimes we have uh, have a bit of a, a trickle at first, but it's good to see you guys here. And uh, I'm uh, excited to get started here once um, the scene finishes saving. But anyway, as I was saying, yeah, I, I went out and snapped some of these photos. Uh, and, you know, just to use as references for the most part, but I actually kind of had this idea uh, you know, some of these are, are, are pretty good quality, you know, I, I just took these with my iPhone, uh, but uh, in fact, I don't think this was even the highest resolution I could have taken, but, um, you know, these are really, these are good res photos, uh, and they're totally uh, usable for photo bashing or, or photo texturing, so I thought maybe we'd try a bit of that today and kind of walk you through how I would go about uh, using these photos to create a scene uh, uh, just with, uh, maybe not just with these photo textures, I might start with a little sketch first and sort of map out my composition. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we can dive in and use some of these. Uh, I had a lot of fun sort of snapping these, uh, it was a really great day. I got some nice rock textures, I uh, got some moss and some trees. Uh, I really liked the, the framing of this, so, you know, maybe uh, I can use this as kind of a, a template for my, my framing here. Uh, yeah, it was, it's uh, it's really fun if you if you have a chance to to go out and do this, uh, just sort of you know snap some some pictures while you're outside. I, I grabbed some water textures here too. I'm not sure uh, where or how I'm gonna use these, but uh, that remains to be seen. So let's just uh, I'm gonna put these over to the side for a minute, and I thought maybe we'd switch it up today as well and try more of a vertical uh, image orientation. I'm actually gonna start out with something a little bit less than I usually do just to keep the to get the ball rolling so let's do uh, 3500 for our height uh, that's more than enough for for most images uh, you know if you're doing a really high resolution print of course maybe you want to go a bit farther than that or if it's something you expect to be zoomed in on uh, you can go higher but uh, yeah uh, welcome to everyone nice photos I <laughs> just ate, that's great. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, yeah, so, you know, there, there are many different ways to go about it. And just, just to sort of uh, kick things off here, you know, the, there's, a, there's a spectrum. Uh, if you're not, a, a, you know, sort of privy to the world of, of using photos or, or, or doing this with digital art, there's a whole spectrum between, uh, you know, uh, photo bashing on one end and digital painting on the other and there can be a lot of confusion about this sometimes and uh, you know within the the art community or even to people who aren't really familiar with it some people think that all digital painting is just photo bashing and photo manipulation other people uh, you know you who are artists may not consider that legitimate or whatever I'm I have no real opinion on it you know everything you use is just a tool there's no shortcut to creating good artwork uh, unless you're literally just taking a photo someone else took uh, or uh, artwork they created and just copying it, which is straight up plagiarism. Obviously, that's not something we're going to be doing today. <laughs> um, you know, and, uh, you know, as far as sourcing your photos, this is something to consider as well before, you know, like I said, I took all these myself, so I don't have to worry about it so much. If you are doing photo bashing or adding photo textures, uh, I recommend using stock uh, or stock photos that that are royalty free. These are some other ones I took as well, but I also have some other 
stock photos I pulled from online in my reference board here, but I mostly just use those for references, not so much for photo bashing stuff. Uh, I think technically, you know, the, the, the rule of thumb is if it's recognizable as someone else's work, uh, you know, you're, you're going to want to make sure it's royalty free. Uh, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about that too much when you're when you're using them within a digital painting. Now, as I said, there's this spectrum, you know, from digital painting on one end to photo bashing on the other. Now, photo bashing would be if I just started with a blank canvas, maybe did a quick sketch, but usually, you know, not. You just jump in there, you start copy and pasting photos and assembling them on your canvas and manipulating them to to blend in with one another so you get a very kind of realistic image. Of course, using this method doesn't always achieve a realistic image and it doesn't always even achieve a good image uh, and so you you still have to draw on those skills of composition and plotting out things and blending in these photos it's a whole skill in itself people that do it successfully are great artists as well it's just another technique you can use to create an image uh, sometimes it can save you time uh, by doing things this way if you don't want to paint out all these details uh, but you do have to be careful especially you know, if you're a beginner and you think you can just jump into photo bashing uh, right off the bat and, and create a good or realistic image, uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble and you're not going to really have a lot of success with that because you do need those fundamental painting skills, those fundamental composition and framing skills to do that successfully. Now on the other end of the spectrum is what I usually do during these weekend streams is uh, more what we would call digital painting where I just start with a blank canvas, I use digital brushes, uh, you know, even a lot of my brushes, such as this uh, mixer brush here, uh, tend to be a bit more painterly. Uh, so it's, it's very much, you know, you're taking those traditional painting skills and you're bringing them to bear on uh, a digital canvas, uh, so to speak. Now, um, you know, there's a, and so between those two, there's a, there's a whole spectrum of intermediary uh, methods. You can start with the digital painting and then add photo textures, which doesn't really alter your composition or your painting so much, but it just allows you to push the detail level and add some, some you know, texture and flavor to your image. Uh, and then, you know, somewhere below that, there's like, uh, you know, or, or, you know, more towards the photo bashing ends of things. You might start with a quick sketch and then just start using the photos as sort of a foundation and then incorporate some painting in there here and there. That's kind of ten, that, that tends to be where I usually draw the line in terms of using photos uh, in my painting. Uh, I, I, I definitely prefer to use a more traditional approach, but it can be kind of fun and, uh, and sort of it's a nice creative challenge to, to use uh, photos in this way in your painting. It also sort of uh, introduces an element of, of spontaneity and unpredictability where you kind of have to be a bit flexible about um, about how you go about your painting process because the photos are going to take some of that control away from you. So anyway, that's that's what I want to preface this with uh, in case you're, you're unfamiliar with this. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think I'm just going to start with a sketch because uh, I like to be able to you know, sort of uh, use uh, my my compositional intuition and instincts to start the the process here. So you know, we can start. I, I like to sort of establish some perspective right off the bat. Uh, I actually did an exercise this weekend where I I created a whole bunch of thumbnails using only uh, black and white uh, sketching. Uh, which was a really useful exercise actually and it's it's a good thing to to practice and think about uh, When you're setting up your compositions, but for now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of establish a bit of a off-kilter horizon line here uh, Just to give it a bit of dynamics a bit of uh, interest here And then I'm just starting out with some sort of loose perspective shapes uh, if you're unfamiliar with that term uh, I do have another video on that that I released uh, a couple weeks ago about uh, creating perspective without using guides uh, by using uh, perspective shapes uh, and uh, that's really useful if you're trying to create landscapes that that have more you know three-dimensionality and depth to them but uh, anyway I'm, I'm gonna establish some kind of focal area here you know it's a, it's a this is kind of a cliche for me at this point but uh, you know you really can't go wrong with a nice tower 
uh, of some kind, or at least we can use that as a placeholder for, for maybe something else that's uh, something interesting that we want to introduce later. Actually, you know, maybe we can kind of push the scale of things a little bit more and really push that, that three-point perspective as well, create something that, that kind of towers above, uh, above us and above the viewer. So I'm just, I'm kind of using some curves to loosely plot out how that perspective changes as it goes up. And we can have some other supporting structures around here. Of course, I always want to be conscious of the shape language I use. And, uh, you know, I try not to be too sketchy about it at this point. Of course, I'm not doing that very well at this point. But I do want to, and that's another benefit of kind of using... Um, you know that black and white or an opaque brush is you have to be a bit more deliberate about it so I'm actually gonna switch over to my ink brush here and uh, I'm gonna start being a bit more deliberate about the shapes I'm setting up I'm gonna try not to have them be too uh, consistent I want to create some variety of big small and medium shapes and I want to make sure this perspective is working well for us here let me just take a quick look at the comments here. Awesome, awesome. Nice to see where people are from. It's it, this is you know one of the I, I I've said this before, but you know one of the greatest things about the work that I do is I get to um, interact with people from all over the world. Uh, so it's really cool to see you guys here. You know from from different uh, places around the world and. Um, you know, it's uh, it's nice to to meet people all the time through you know my lessons, through my mentorship program, uh, or through you know doing client work. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in, in checking out more information on the mentorship program, I do have a link to that in the description below, uh, as well as links to uh, the brush pack uh, that I've created uh, that I use in these streams and in pretty much all of my work. Um, it's uh, it's really designed to kind of simplify a lot of the. The design choices I make, I don't like using a wide variety of complex brushes. I really just uh, try to keep it simple and straightforward and more kind of traditionally minded. So uh, that's kind of where, where I'm coming from with, with these uh, brushes as well. I'm going to start creating a bit of a path here maybe. Following some of the, again, following these um, perspective uh, shapes that I've... I've been talking about here. I'm going to kind of try to create a path from the bottom of the canvas uh, out towards the midground and then eventually to that, that tower in the back there. And I want to try to maximize overlapping as well. Uh, that's another great way to create depth in your landscape or in any painting continue to deliberately create objects that are overlapping one another so that's going to really convince your view your viewer that this is a three-dimensional space so I've created another sort of smaller rock here not for any particular reason other than I wanted to create some overlap in that area And of course I can create some some foreground objects like uh, you know just a random rock here uh, to serve as a composition blocker uh, it's not always totally necessary but that can help keep the eye within this painting I'm gonna flip it so I can get a, a good perspective on the balance here I think this tower is it's like it's curving and leaning a little bit so I'm just gonna make a quick uh, selection here and uh, let's use our warp tool. We can also use this as an opportunity to enhance that perspective even more. And I don't want this tower to create a tangent with the top of the canvas, so I'm going to push it up a little bit actually. I want it to clearly either exit the canvas or remain within it. Uh, you know, I may actually end up choosing the former, but what we don't want is something that kind of barely touches the the, uh, 
the edge of the canvas like that so I'm actually gonna pull this back and we're gonna go with the, the stay within the, the canvas option uh, you know maybe we can think about adding some more you know the, the, the advantage of of doing this sketch first is it allows you to sort of formulate your idea and and uh, have some input on 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 your concept and that's that's really what art is all about it's you know you can take or at least the kind of art that I like to do is is you can introduce some sort of uh, extra real or fantastical elements uh, into your painting that you can't capture with a photograph you know I could just I could just become a photographer and go out there with my iPhone and capture some great photos of the woods and that's that's awesome too but you know for me it's all about sort of pushing these concepts to the next level and uh, and you know creating things that that don't uh, exist in the world already or or at least you know sort of playing on on concepts that do exist in such a way that uh, that uh, it's it sort of creates something new it's almost I almost feel like this is um, this is a little bit it, it, almost like the whole composition is leaning a bit to one side and I was I was thinking of having this um, this tower structure to I was thinking of keeping it in line with the rest of the perspective but maybe it would be interesting actually if we had this tower coming out at a different angle than uh, the rest of the structures here that's gonna create some contrast actually and you know when you think about contrast uh, in artwork or in photography, we usually think about value contrast. You know, we think about how bright or dark something is and how much that contrast is present. Or maybe even color contrast where uh, we sort of think about, um, you know, how bright or saturated a color is versus how muted or uh, desaturated some other colors are. But, uh, you know, one, one thing a lot of people miss is there are actually there's so many different types of contrast. One of them being a uh, contrast of shape or contrast of direction. So, uh, you know, if we just, I can show you, if we have this kind of facing out in this direction and everything else in this painting is kind of going up away here, that creates a point of interest. So that's going to sort of reinforce our, our focal area uh, by showing how it, how it differs from the rest of the painting. Oh, it's cool. You're uh, working on a clay project right now, Jose. Um, yeah, I, uh, I actually used to do quite a bit of clay work. I don't know if you guys have seen the the dragons. Well, this is one of them. Uh, but I actually made six of them for a project in college and been sort of carrying them around <laughs> everywhere I've went since. Um, but uh, that was a lot of fun. I love working with clay. Uh, it's really, um, you know, I haven't I haven't tried 3D sculpting so much, uh, but I imagine it doesn't quite beat uh, getting your hands uh, dirty in some some nice clay. So, um, yeah, and also you know that really helped helped my drawing as well. You know, all of these different skills they're gonna reinforce each other. And when I when I worked with clay a lot like that with a lot of sculptural stuff, um, I did I did sort of. Um, I got pretty familiar with with sort of sculpting forms, and uh, I could bring that to my to my drawings as well in in a much clearer way. Uh, I got a much greater appreciation of of 3D space there. All right, I'm probably gonna wrap this sketch up because uh, I don't want to get too complex at this point. I want to leave a little bit room a little bit of room for uh, these photos to tell their story as well. Just gonna make one one kind of last refinement to the shape here. Uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of thinking abstractly at this point. I'm not even really sure how all of these shapes are gonna work together, but uh, that's a, you know another useful thing that that black and white exercise uh, taught me was you know thinking about things in terms of shape, language, and design first, uh, and then and then subject matter or content second. So 
All right, let's bring in our um, photos here. Let's see, it's fun to see Eben starting, and I'm just traumatized identifying rhythm, composition, and balance. Okay. Well, you know, if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to drop them in the in the comments there. You know, any any kind of uh, specifics on those, uh, and uh, you know, it's they're you know they're they're fairly um, once you kind of understand them as terms, you can sort of intuit how they apply to your paintings. But um, you know, there's you can get into quite a bit of depth uh, about composition terminology and that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, if if you want to. Uh, to see a video on that as well, I'd be happy to happy to do that. You know, I take I take uh, people's requests all the time for video content, so you know, just leave it in the comments, and I'd be happy to to make a video on it. All right, so this is looking uh, interesting enough. Now uh, let's 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 see what we've got here. See some things. I mean, I've got a lot of great rock photos, so maybe. Uh, we can start with that, but maybe I, I want to get a nice uh, sky background in there first. So I did, didn't take any of those during my uh, trip, but we can probably find something uh, from my other photos here. I actually have a whole folder, I think, devoted to sky uh, textures. Let's go into my references folder here. Uh, maybe it would be under landscapes. We have clouds here. I don't have enough of those. It's a shame. Um, yeah, I think it's 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 getting to that time where I'm gonna have to start. Uh, Start building up my my reference folder a little bit more. I've been finding it to be fairly lacking recently. This is a, I think this is a photo set from Photobash.com, which is a great resource uh, for that kind of thing. I don't know if they have any sky textures in here. See if there are any here. No. Where was I finding those? I found some earlier. I can't remember where. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. How's the resolution on that photo? Let's see here. That's not too bad. Let's try it. You know, it'll just get the ball rolling. We don't have to. We don't have to uh, completely stick to it. We can just. Now here's a, an important thing too. I'm gonna I'm gonna import this in its full resolution. Uh, I'm actually gonna convert this to a smart object first, and that's useful if you're not sure what the size is of your texture when you bring it in. Um, you know, I would recommend converting it to a smart object before you finalize that texture. That's gonna make sure that your resolution isn't impacted as you resize it. So I can I can make it really really small, and then bring it back up and that resolution is still going to be fine. Uh, if I did not convert it to a smart object first, uh, that would not that would not happen, it would not work out. So I'm actually seeing an opportunity maybe for this, this thing on the right to serve as part of this uh, part of this wall here. And I'm going to use, I can use the, the warp tool a little bit to sort of manipulate that somewhat. I want to make sure my my sky texture is covering all of this space here. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of stretching it out a little bit, but uh, I'm not, not terribly concerned about that. What am I dropping my own courses in art station learning? You know, I, I don't know. I actually only discovered that um, when you dropped that uh, that link in the chat. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Um, and I've actually I've been using it uh, quite a lot. Uh, I've been learning a lot actually. That's like um, when I sit down for a meal. That's what I what I watch. Um, so that's been super useful. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure what you have to do to to qualify. 
uh, to get in there or if you can just post stuff in there. I'm, I'm not really sure how it goes. Uh, you know, at this point, I like to keep things on my website. Um, and uh, I haven't, I actually haven't, have not been um, putting much stuff on ArtStation recently, but um, kind of overdue for a, a portfolio update there as well. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually reconsidering. Uh, I, I think I'm just going to use the, the sky from this. I'm not going to incorporate that other uh, piece as well. Because I want to make sure I can... Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. There's a start. Now, another thing to consider here is your light source. Now, you want to use uh, photos that have a similar light source. If you use, for example, on one side of the... Uh, of the image, if you use you know a set of rocks that has light coming from one direction, and then on the other side you have a set of rocks that have light coming from a different direction, it's going to look very weird. Uh, so uh, I want to be conscious of that when I'm I'm choosing my textures, and I want to be decisive about where my light source is coming from uh, at the beginning. And I think I'm going to decide it's coming from the top right. Uh, with this background sky texture, it's kind of uncertain at this point. It's sort of an ambient. Um, overcast day so the light source is not clear so that's gonna kind of work well for us uh, we get to decide our own uh, our own path there and you know I'm kind of seeing an uncanny resemblance between this rock photo that I took and this structure in the background so I'm gonna see if they they kind of fit together if I flip it horizontal so the light source is coming from the other side I can actually, I'm going to reduce the opacity of this sketch a little bit just so I can see a bit more clearly how that's all going to work out. The problem is this, uh, this is actually a different perspective uh, than, than the photo I've taken. And there are some ways around that, but uh, it might be uh, difficult to pull off actually. Maybe we can save this rock for another time. Because we want to be, notice how, um, you know, like we can see the top sides of these planes. We can see the, the top areas of this. So it's almost like we're looking down at it. And we don't want that. We want something that we're looking up at. So I'm not sure. Let's see if I, I captured anything like that. There's some nice texture stuff here. And that's, you know, that's good for photo texturing. But I want something solid we can use as a, uh, a foundation. I think I um, have something somewhere for that if I can find it. This is kind of nice. There's some rock things here. Yeah, these are all kind of looking down. Um, you know, another thing we could do is we could actually take the ones that are looking down and reverse them, but that kind of messes up the texture a little bit. Now this is kind of kind of useful. Maybe we can start with this. It's not quite the the pattern I'm looking for, but um, and, you know, this is just all to say that, uh, you know, with, with this method, you're not always going to have control over everything. So you have to kind of leave a little bit of it up to the, um, the photo. So I'm actually just going to stretch this out a little bit. Hopefully not so much that it, it distorts the, the image too much, but that's fitting there nicely. I think it looks okay. Alright, so uh, let's see how that looks without the sketch there. And of course it doesn't really look like much because we haven't really added anything else or created any other context. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the object select tool. It's up here under the wand menu I think by default. Uh, and this this will usually work for something that has a clear background. Sometimes it takes a minute for the, uh, the algorithm to pick it up. Uh, I actually forgot to grab some water for this stream, so I'm, I'm just going to grab that real quick.
All right, we are back in business here. I don't know if you've ever tried to talk for two hours, but uh, it does tend to dehydrate you a little bit. So this object selection tool didn't quite do what we want. So I'm going to hold down. Uh, I'm going to grab my quick selection tool and hold down Alt uh, to trim away some of this other stuff. And then you can hit Shift to add to your selection. With any selection tool you're using, by the way, uh, you can use those two uh, keys to um, to add or subtract to your selection. So now we have that selected out. It's looking a little bit more uh, fitting in this context here. So I'm going to start adding some other stuff here. All right, let's see, what else we got? I do want to use my own uh, photo textures as much as possible, but you know, they, they're not always going to fit every context. And I think I've set up a bit of a different scene here uh, than, than, you know, I might end up, uh, I don't know, I might end up using a different sky because a lot of these, this is like a very, these are all very sunny day photos and, um, and uh, that sky is not telling that story so much. Uh, in fact, I think a lot of this is going to be in shadow, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how we can uh, blend this stuff together a little bit. In the meantime, I think we can start to add some more rocks. And I do want to have them to... I want to make it look like they're made out of the same material, so we can start... Um, can start adjusting the um, the coloring a little bit. To make it sort of uh, make them sort of blend in a little bit, but uh, you know I'm actually not going to do that quite yet because I just I want to just set everything up first. So this is a sort of a rock wall. I think we're. Let's see. How can we? This is kind of closest to the perspective we want. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm really skewing the perspective so it will match the lines that I've already set up for our uh, for our object. And I can, I'm actually, you know, those lines bend a little bit. They curve a little bit. So I'm going to actually do the same thing here. I'll have them bend a little bit outward and sort of taper a little bit as this object curves around the surface here. Now, of course, that's not the most important place to, uh, to use photo texturing. Of course, it's very near the edge of the canvas. Uh, but, um, I'm not uh, I'm just I'm just gonna use these photo textures for just about everything at this point because it's kind of fun so I'm gonna put this layer in front of the other one we're gonna use that for this more close-up rock here I'm actually going to cut it out first I'm gonna put it in front of this one as well let's let's just do a quick polygonal lasso tool cut can always adjust those edges later on. And let's move that over here. Once again, warping it to, to help it uh, match our environment a little better. All right, let's keep going here. I want to I want to get something solid for our our ground base. Uh, I really like. I'm a big fan of this texture here. And this would be good. I'm not getting the impression. You know, we didn't do a value map for this yet, so I'm not totally sure what what all my values are going to look like. 
Uh, it's definitely something to consider when you're plotting this out. I do want to have kind of some of that dappled sunlight effect, so maybe, um, <clears throat> maybe we will. And I like I like all this. So let's let's just take this and let's flip it. Oh, you know what? Actually, this might fit nicely with this little. Now let's flip it. Our light source is coming from the right. Remember. And I want to have it line up with this this little rock we set up earlier. And then we can really kind of exaggerate that perspective again. I'm going to have it sort of squish down in the middle towards the, the mid-ground. And then as we come into the foreground. Of course, you know, it's already 3D, so there's not there's no need to really add in too much perspective. But I really like to exaggerate it. Kind of squishing that down towards the middle. All right. I know that you know everything kind of looks like a bit of a mess here at this point, but um, so let's try. Let's use another strategy here that's really useful for this. I'm going to create a mask layer. I just hit this uh, little um, button down here to create a mask layer, and then when you're using a mask layer, you uh, can use black or white to paint in or out of your image. So I'm going to. Just go ahead and paint black all around this layer here. <laughs> and there's nothing really behind it, so once again it looks kind of weird, but it'll it'll all come together eventually. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, now one picture I did not snap while I was out there was some of the nice mountains we have around here. So I'm gonna actually pull in uh, some other, just for, for our background some vague mountainous shapes uh, let's grab that paste F flip that actually I'm really just interested in these ones in the midground so I'm gonna go ahead actually let me uh, bring that to the fore foreground for a minute and I'm gonna use that quick selection tool once again I'm gonna grab these areas behind I don't want any of that really I just want this center part all right now let's bring that back here again maybe flip it and it looks weird right now because it's a different uh, color so uh, let's adjust that with our color balance. And then we're going to want to desaturate that as well. And sometimes you have to sort of bounce back and forth between those until you get the right hue. I think that's looking okay. So now we have a little bit of context there as well. We can actually use this same uh, texture. twice as long as we're not too obvious about it so maybe we want to use just a we can rescale it uh, or we can um, you know change the orientation or flip it actually that works pretty well we just don't want to be too obvious about it so I'm probably actually going to uh, use the mask layer again and take the, the top part of that off And it's still like this line here, you can clearly see, that's kind of obvious. Um, so I'm actually, I'm going to copy, copy and paste this again, flip it again, and sort of, well, no, let's, let's flip it back. Maybe I can use 
this other part at the bottom that's not so obvious in the other in the other area just to cover that up now it seems a bit more a bit more organic all right uh Keldar Eben do you think as a beginner student it's better to just paint because it forces you to understand colors and value rather than just rely on photos uh, absolutely I do um, I mean at any you know at any phase I would say it's not you don't want to necessarily totally rely on photos anyway but um, you know the I think the the most important thing is that you understand the fundamentals you understand composition and, and good value and good lighting uh, without that uh, you're it's is going to you know look pretty pretty bad it's not gonna look any worse than maybe a, a painting you would create at the same skill level but you're not gonna get a better result from photo bashing than you would uh, from painting and in fact you know if you're if you're thinking about people's you know how people perceive your work and that kind of thing it's actually going to um, I think people are more skeptical of, of digital painting and photo manipulation anyway so they might you might even get less credit for it, even if you worked really hard on it. Uh, people will be like, "Oh, you just slapped a bunch of photos together," or it's, or, or even even if they don't realize it consciously, if they see something that looks digital, like there's this red flag that goes off in their head. So, I would not recommend doing this unless you are, are confident that you can create a good image with it. Uh, photo texturing is a little different. You can kind of pull that off uh, with some, you know, basic painting skills. As long as you're not being too obvious about it, as long as you're using like uh, layer styles and matching it well, but even then, um, even then you still have to produce. Uh, you have to make sure that the textures are lining up well with your image. Um, I would not say this is. I would recommend anyone starting out with this per se. It's a fun tool, um, and you know if, if you just if you just want to have fun with it, of course go go nuts with it. If this if you want this to be your whole thing, sure. Um, it's not going to really teach you how to make a better painting, uh, per se. I hope that, uh, answers your question a little bit. Uh, I'm actually realize I'm losing some of the resolution on this, on this bit here, so I'm not sure I want to use that. At least at that scale, maybe I can do something like this. So I've just, I've taken the same image and I've just reworked it a little bit and I'm also going to change the value later it's going to be pretty unrecognizable as you know as the same object there uh, I'm also kind of seeing some opportunities for maybe a different composition than I imagined uh, you know if we look back at our sketch here you can see that I had this idea for creating a path going up this way and and leading up over here and we can still do that of course but I'm also seeing an interesting way our path can come because the light is now highlighting this area to the right and I can almost see how our path could could travel out over to the right and follow over that hill there and that could be interesting as well so you know we'll kind of wait and see uh, until we have this whole space filled before we start making those decisions because we could just as easily go with our original plan and actually cast this in shadow once again uh, and ha and not use it as a lighting cue for the eye to follow but yeah thanks for thanks for uh, that input as well Nick um, I, I think that's that's generally the consensus um, uh, among among people that use this method it is it is generally you know something that's better uh, not to say you can't use it if you're a beginner but it's 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 best to really understand those fundamental principles first. Understand how to create a solid image just through design choices, just through, you know, like I said before, just black and white shapes. If you can do that successfully, if you can create a great composition out of just black and white shapes, uh, you, you you can probably dabble in photo bashing a little bit too, but then you're also dealing with color and value, and it's just it can be kind of a delicate process, and it's easy to sort of uh, screw up and, and create something that looks really... Um, really, really off. Uh, but, you know, of course, if you're interested in learning more about this, I'm not an expert on photo bashing or using photo textures so much. Like I said, it's not something I do often, but, um, 
but uh, you know it is uh, it is a, a technique that's useful to have and there are plenty of people out there that that can really um, help you learn it All right, I'm gonna take this next image here this beautiful moss here once again I have actually you know what my light source is coming from the other direction here so I'm gonna want to flip that I'm gonna use that for this this area over here Maybe we want we want to have some trees as well, you know, to, to help frame things. I don't know if I included that in my original sketch here, but it's something we can do. Uh, you know, we have lots of great photos of trees here. Uh, actually, going to. I think one of the th maybe one of the reasons why this is not like such a great first choice for for beginners is. Um, you know, it's it's easy to sort of let the photo lead the way uh, in terms of your choices. So, like, you know, to sort of let things be as they are from from the way the photo has has laid them out. And um, you know, it takes sort of a if you if you have more experience with with design and with with traditional painting, you're going to see places where the photo is not serving you well and make edits accordingly. Uh, whereas otherwise, you might just sort of be be inclined to to just let it uh, guide the process a little bit more. So I'm going to start blending some of these with, with more of a soft brush so we can avoid having those hard edges there. And it doesn't always, you know, they don't always blend super well together, but eventually these are all going to kind of, kind of tie in. And just to, to repeat some of our, our elements here, I've actually made one sort of design difference here where this rock isn't present anymore. But you know what? I think we should we should stick with our, our original plan. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a let's find a different uh, rock texture here. That's kind of nice. Do you like that one? I I'm skeptical about how the lighting is gonna work there. Let's see what how it looks if it, it's flipped. Then the lighting is coming from the other side. It's not really better. I guess this would be the best, but it doesn't really fit the context. So let's try again. Hey, Vera, welcome. All right, let's see if we have some other... These are kind of cool. It doesn't really fit with the theme though. I kind of want to keep our, our theme fairly uh, cohesive. So let's just, uh, let's grab this rock again. Whoa, buddy. I'm gonna flip it. Actually, I should flip it this way since our light source is Hmm. Oh, I see why this didn't work before. Okay. I think this one could be okay. Yeah, I'm noticing with a lot of these photos I took. That's something I'll have to think about last, next time because the light source is sort of the same on all of them. Probably because I was going in a, a relatively straight path and I was only taking pictures in front of me. Uh, so that's something I'll have to, to consider for next time. But, you know, we can actually, we can just take something like this. This is more of a flat texture. Uh, and let's see, so the light source in this case would be coming from above. This is uh, something we can just sort of, we can make something new out of this based on this texture. If we just sort of warp it, manipulate it a little bit, and then uh, mess with the edges as well. Uh, let's turn back on for a moment I 
just want to create you see some interesting uh, stuff happening here all right let's let's do that and then we can use our mask layer to just uh, paint around that and we'll call that we'll call that a rock now I'm, I'm right off the bat I know I'm gonna want to darken that a little bit because this is cast in shadow And you know, I'm looking up at my navigator right now and I think that works really well with the composition as we already established it. So I'm gonna keep it that way. Starting starting to see things here, but it's we're not quite there yet. Actually, we might have. Oh, let's uh, let's grab this. Flip it around. So actually, no, this is good. I want to use this for our our framing uh, object on this left side. I'm actually going to select. All of this here. I'm going to delete it. I'm not going to use a mask layer because I know I'm, I'm not going to to want to get any of that back. But all right, and uh, let's just see how that fits with everything else. I think I want to have this in front of that, perhaps. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. And, uh, you know, now I'm seeing some of these rocks are a little bit, uh, well, we can, we can balance everything in terms of value and color, uh, later on. I think for now, I just want to, to keep them as they are, just so I can get my, my general composition layout first. And we can start balancing different elements and making sure everything fits together. Hello, hello. Welcome, uh, Uandi. Uandi. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's just Andy on your uh, Instagram. I'm <laughs> not sure which you prefer, but welcome. Uh, welcome. Nice. Talking about chocolate chocolate chip cookies here. I love the uh, the the sub conversations that happen <laughs> when I'm not looking. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty fun. All right. Now, I think I, I accidentally pulled this object a little too close to the top there, so I'm actually gonna bring that back a bit. And this is going to be our point of interest, so we're gonna go in and, and manipulate that a little bit later, just to give it some some features. You know, we don't wanna just create another landscape here. We wanna create something really, uh, really cool, so. Actually, going to uh, adjust the perspective a little bit here as well because I want to make sure. Um, you know, we want it to look like we're we're looking up from from underneath. I suppose that's the best we'll get for now. All right, now I think you know just to ter just in terms of filling the the blank space here. Uh. Uh, I think well, we just have one more spot to fill and maybe we can use some of that dappled sunlight I was talking about earlier from from this area because I really really enjoy that so let's grab let's grab this photo once again I really like the framing of that um, but it doesn't look like we're gonna be it maybe we can use some of these trees actually later on So really all I want here is this here. I'm gonna copy and paste that. Oh, that already looks really nice. And then I'm just gonna exaggerate it a little bit to fit the perspective. Notice how things just, oh, there's, wow, what is that? 
beautiful bird. I've never seen that before. It has a blue head. I don't know if I can show you guys here. I don't know if you can see that at all, but, <laughs> um, wow, it's big, big blue headed bird out there. Never seen before. All right. Stay on target here, Eben. We're almost there. Sometimes this, this sometimes this stuff can get a little bit tedious, but, uh, it's, it's, it's really worth it. All right, and we can just clean up that edge a little bit. So it will blend in with our other textures here. I don't uh, you know, it looks kind of nice. I don't know. I'm starting to starting to be skeptical. Once once again, I said I I, I was not hundred percent about that sky choice, and I think I think it's not it's not really reflecting the atmosphere we're creating with all this strong sunlight. It looks a little bit too overcast. So let's let's find something else. These snowy landscapes have some nice clouds here. Maybe this one will work. No, it's 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 uh, I don't know, I don't know if you guys could see that at all. It probably did not show up on the tiny little uh, webcam window there, but it was not not a blue jay. Um, it was it was I thought it was a crow at first. It's about the same size, just a little bit smaller maybe. Uh. But it had a, a like a dark blue head and like white rings around its eyes, uh, and a different. Its head was a little more rounded than a crow's. Uh, I'll have to have to look that up later. All right, let's copy that sky once again. Actually, interesting. Maybe we can use. This whole section here. There could be some snowy mountains in the back. That's kind of cool. I don't know if it's <laughs> geographically possible, but uh, just looking up at my navigator here, it may, may. I don't know. That's kind of cool. It creates a nice color contrast too. Um, yeah, screw it. Let's let's see how that goes. I haven't flipped this in a while either, so I don't know how accurate this is looking, but I think I think I'm I think I'm pulling it off. Yeah, we can have these these mountains in the middle as kind of a buffer. You know, I might find some better some better uh, intermediate mountain shapes that are I guess it's okay yeah I'm not I don't think they blend super well someone lost a parrot yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You get the full live experience. Distractions and all. What about what about this one? I just want to try this one real quick. Hmm, nah, I'm not feeling it. I like this. Um I just wanna have Something 
separating. I don't know. We'll we'll think about it later. Right now my values are all a little little all over the place. It's not a it's not a great value scheme, so I have to think about how I'm gonna approach that. Okay, that seems okay for now. I mean, honestly, you know, at this point, you can probably start doing a little bit of atmospheric layering. So I'm going to create a new layer here, and we can start, you know, separating things out like that. So... So they're not too um, too attractive to the eye. I'm gonna create a bit of contrast around our focal point here, and then we're kind of free to manipulate things a little bit. Yeah, I'm just not totally buying that that mountainscape there, so let's find something else. That's kind of cool. Those are too distant though. I want some some kind of good mid-ground mountains here. A grackle? That's not real. That sounds, sounds like you just made that up. Grackle. That's kind of neat. I don't know. That's pretty pretty high contrast, though. I mean. I could have sworn I had a lot better. Uh, let's look in my my reference folder here. Oh, you know what? I forgot I had this. I had this reference pack. I just downloaded from uh, photobash.org. Maybe they have something in here. This was for a different project, but they might have some mountains. And this is all all a bit more rural. Okay, let's go back to references. And um, let's go to landscapes, mountains. Oh, <laughs> I really need to uh, really need to update my reference folder here. I got one mountains. I got one photo in my my mountains folder. That will not do. Maybe in the uh, valley. That's another one. There's some mountains there. That might work. Let's see. Grackle. Nah, that's not real. Where'd it go? Should we look it up? I don't know. Maybe I should look it up here so we can finally put this issue to rest. No, I gotta focus. I gotta focus here, guys. Stop distracting me with birds. All right, well, all right, hang on. Let me just color balance that. I should probably move this whole uh, process along a bit. There we go. 
that's something. I don't know. It's really not that important. Uh, I'm just being very picky about it. Ooh, that could work. All right. Now, what was I doing? All right, I want to take this uh, and cast the top of it in shadow a little bit. Actually, let's take the whole thing. I want to bring out some of those brighter highlights we're seeing in some of the other rocks. I want to really cast some strong light. Create a lot of contrast around this focal area. Next, I want to create some areas of deliberate shadow to help focus attention in on the base. I'm probably going to do something else down there. I'm going to create a, a little layer of atmospheric perspective to uh, create a bit more depth to this, make it look a bit more vast. Maybe we can have like a bridge going out there or something. I'm not sure. I feel like, let's return to our sketch for a moment, because I feel like we may have deviated quite a bit. Eh, not too much. But that rock in the middle might be getting in the way. Let's see what happens if I just get rid of that. That's a little bit better. I think maybe the problem is it's just very high contrast, so uh, I think we need to take everything. First of all, I'm going to push these highlights again. Um, I think everyone else, everything else here, we I really want to reinforce that that shadow. So, and I want to have this, let's see, these I can blend together. I'm going to color balance those. Actually, let's color balance this top one because these are all in shadow. So I'm going to push them more towards the blue. I'm going to desaturate. I'm going to darken them. Same here. Push towards the blue. Desaturate, darken. And I can probably safely merge some of these together. And then create a mask layer, and I'm just going to edit this edge a little bit to be more realistic. And there's some weird... What's this line? What's that line doing there? Is that from this photo? No. What is it? <laughs> So confused. I have to go through. This is another thing. If you, you know, using all these different layers, this is why I don't use layers so much. It just like vastly complicates identifying problems. I have to go through each layer. Okay, that. That's weird. We want to get rid of that. <laughs> 
There's like a Is this not going away? That's what I want to know. Hmm. You know what? Screw it. Let's just erase from the original layer. We don't need that. We don't need that garbage here. Ooh, this is way too saturated. It was hidden by fog. Yeah, this is all getting a bit complex for my tastes. But we've eliminated that. Now we have to find out what this line is. What is it? Oh, looks interesting. We may have found a culprit here. Aha! Die line. All right, the line is dead. What's this <laughs> random foggy stuff? Uh, that was apparently needed to create a background for these rocks. Okay. Uh, wait, no, it wasn't. It's just an extra thing. Awesome, cool. Problem solved. Let's go back to what I was talking about creating an edge here uh, let's use our mask layer non-destructive editing hey Jurgen welcome you missed an important bird sighting but it's okay because apparently we figured out what it is I'm still skeptical though So I'm just going to create some contours here to uh, to reinforce the texture, make it sort of blend well with what's happening there. It's just subtle stuff, but you know, it's going to help all of this read a bit better. You know, I can also use that to um, to change my shapes a little bit, sort of guide those decisions, you know? But let's take this whole layer. I do want to inject a bit more reflected uh, skylight in here. So we're just gonna give it a bit more, a bit more of a blue tint. And then uh, near the base, you can actually create a bit of reflected light here. Create a new layer on linear dodge. Set the brush to linear dodge. And just show how some of the Light down here is just bouncing up a little bit. Can clip that down to the layer below. Alright, things are starting to blend a little bit. I'm actually going to do some of that edge editing here. Because I want this to sort of resemble our initial sketch shape a little bit more because you know those were those were uh, shape decisions that I made deliberately and I want to trust that initial instinct let's 
see how that looks. Cool. Now we can just uh, edit that a little bit more so it's matching our texture. I think there's gonna be there's gonna be something else going on down there. I'm not I'm not crazy about all that. And this we don't need that. Do we? Nope. It's gone. And alright, what else do we have in our sketch here? We had some some stuff happening. I think this this had a, a bit of a different shape. Let's bring that sketch layer up again. Let's see if we can match that a little more closely. Once again, I really want to go with the decisions I made at the beginning during the sketch phase because they looked good then. And so they're going to look good now. And this too, this was different. This was framing our main object a little bit better. And then this, what is this? That, yeah. This was not, this is kind of going down like that. All right, we can bring some of this back. So I'm really using this sketch as a guide. And there were some other rocky things happening below there in that uh, region that we can we can bring in some other um, some other photos once again I think real quick I just want to take this it's just very whoa <laughs> I was gonna say very bright and distracting so um, let's bring that down I think I want this whole area to be in shadow And to reinforce that, we can create some more blue tones here from the, the ambient skylight. Don't want to push it too far, but... And honestly, I'm not crazy about this rock shape there. I know I included that in the sketch. And it seemed to work well there. I'm not sure if it's going to make the final cut. But, before we decide that... Let's take this light away because this is no longer being illuminated like that. And I think I kind of kind of ruined this color here by uh, messing with it too much. So let's bring back some of those some of that warmth. Nice. Now this is contrasting well with the base of that uh, object. Welcome, uh, Sahiru. Am I studying the pick or editing it? Both. Maybe we can create a little bit of... Uh, atmosphere here as well just keep creating a bit more depth maybe not quite that intense but just sort of very generally here
Let's create a bit of lower contrast up in this corner as well. So that's not too distracting. And uh, actually that's, that's a bit heavy. Dial that back a sec. All right. Now what we're gonna do about this area down here, we could do something where, um, well, let's see what we've, we've got to work with from our, our adventure outside. That's kind of cool, let's try that. Let's warp that perspective. Now I've actually lost some of that exaggerated perspective I, I started out with, and that's that can happen with the, the photo texturing sometimes. Um, Once again, you're you're kind of limited to what you have at your disposal. So, uh, I'm just gonna gonna accept that change. So this all kind of ended up being a bit more straight on, uh, but it's okay. see how this can can fit in here yeah, it's already starting to blend a little bit so you know the advantage of this this uh, mask layer is we can just keep going back and forth a little bit find out where that sweet spot is we can even kind of sketch some shadows in using this mask layer. Once again, bringing those those painting skills to bear. And then we can have, we can uh, we can use a soft brush to just blend that in a little bit better. I think we're actually losing a bit of that detail with this uh, atmosphere, so let's just uh, let's actually just get rid of that for now. Where did all that craziness come from? And I think I, I want to introduce some, some more overlapping structures because we kind of had that in our, de our initial design here. And I'm seeing that this this uh, orientation here is a bit off. It's almost curving inward. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, let's keep keep bringing it up. Oh, and I do want to take the some of these shadow values out. I think that's what's what's making this look a little little off as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, shadows. Let's bring up the cool element in those a little bit more. And of course, our highlights. We want to be nice and warm. Ooh, this could be like a whole temple. And we can bring in some some architectural elements here. 
Man, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> All right, get rid of that, get rid of that. Don't need that. I like this, I like how that's, there's even some like leafy shadows there. Uh, we can we can blur that out a little bit. We don't, obviously that scale isn't gonna work for the leaves, but I kind of like how that those shadows are being cast there. And in fact, we were gonna put in some trees, weren't we? So let's go back here. I have tons of awesome trees to use. Start with this one. Boom. Painting complete. No, not really. Uh, we can... Put this here. It's going to be a little bit tricky with all the branches and everything, but I think we can handle it okay. Copy and paste that. Whoops, deleted the wrong one. Oh, I see what I did. Copied and pasted the wrong selection. Let's invert that. I suppose you can copy and paste it or just delete it, whatever works for you. Now that tree is looking pretty nice there, but uh, it's kind of getting in the way. Do something like that. And uh, actually, let's just bring that up a little bit so we don't have any weird gaps at the top there. Am I saving it? <laughs> oh, God. I have not saved, no. This is where I need you, Jose. Uh, yeah, I should do that. Although, I've not had any Photoshop crashes recently. Uh, but let's do it anyway. Let's put this in our art videos, live streams. PSDs, live stream, 41, I actually have to start naming these, I'll call this uh, Forest Photo Bash, boom. And this is a bit high contrast too, so I'm going to, once again, bring up those shadows just a little bit. And uh, yeah, let's, um, oh, let me get rid of that, that little spot down here. Uh, let's bring in some other trees. I'm seeing, I'm imagining like two skinny ones here, maybe one thick one and one skinny one over here. So let's, um, maybe I have some wider angle photos here. Of course you could just draw a tree, it's not that hard, but. I want to stay true to my original intention here. Actually, this is going to be easier to to grab. Let's use the same one. Oh, the music is uh, getting pretty epic. That's good. Just grab all of this stuff. All that good stuff, we can always trim it back later. Let's copy, paste. Oh, that's gonna look awesome. I don't know why.
Oh, right there, maybe? Let's take down those highlights. I always use the wrong slider here. Ooh, what if we used like a darken mode? That's kind of cool. I haven't really talked about layer modes much here, but it's a useful thing to be familiar with uh, if you are going to be doing this. Just gonna get rid of all this stuff for now. We can always, you know, draw it back later on. Just want to keep this clean for now. I'm probably gonna get rid of those branches too. Keep it simple. We can always bring in another uh, texture for the uh, this tree foliage stuff up here, but honestly at the moment I'm not even sure I really want to use that much of it. You know, I want to keep a clear vista here, so maybe we'll just stick with the, the trunk for now. And uh, let's actually make another one of those, bring it further down maximize our overlap just gonna stretch it out all crazy like we're gonna uh, go to the bottom here sort of fade that out a little bit Probably bring down the shadow values, bring those up, I should say, and push it a little bit more into the blue. I'm not sure if that's the best position for that. Maybe I should put it in here. Take it off of darken mode. This should be up top. All right, enough uh, fiddling with that. Whoops, what, uh, what just happened there? I don't know. Okay, let's go here, select our mask. It can get a little bit, like I said, it gets, gets a, little bit, uh, a little bit cumbersome with all of these uh, different layers. But, you know, as you can see, the result is starting to uh, to shape up, starting to look pretty nice. Kind of uh, want to 
find some kind of, uh, let's go back to my references folder. And see if we can find architectural, something to use for this, uh, this facade. Some kind of ancient temple. Hmm. It might work if I stretch it a little bit. Let's try it. It's really the wrong perspective entirely, but maybe I can force it. <laughs> oh my god, hang on, let me, uh, let me try that again. Or maybe even this section over on the side, that could be cool. But first let me try this. Copy paste. Really force that into some kind of approximation of the perspective we have here. Okay, let's see what happens. Let me put this here. And set it on. Darken. Increase the. Can always desaturate it later. that I don't even know if this is gonna really pan out but I'm just kind of exploring an idea here
There we go. It's going to be a, our point of interest. Uh, it's going to be this uh, general. I mean, it's a pretty large point of interest. You know, generally around here, around where this uh, this uh, spot I'm putting in right now is. Um, I've just got to get it to uh, to blend a little bit better. Right, maybe a little touch more yellow in the highlights. Honestly, we could just do that one. Nah, I like the three, but we're missing part of the. Uh, photograph here so we may have to do a bit of manual work you can actually just take this copy paste move that over I think it was a bit thinner Something like that. Pretty close. Although, this was moved back a bit. And speaking of backs, mine is uh, killing me a little bit right now, so I'm going to have to wrap this up in 15 minutes or so, if not sooner. But we're kind of uh, getting along here. We might even, uh, I don't know, maybe we could have a part two to this one, because I'm, I'm really enjoying this process, and I feel like there's a really, uh, really cool image that we can uh, can get out of this one. But, I do have my physical limitations here to consider. But I'm just going to go around this and blend it in a little bit. So it kind of looks like it's, it's merging with the, the rock face.
I don't know if that's quite working actually. Um, I think we need to adjust those shadows. Or maybe create a adjustment layer here. Give this a little bit more of a focus. Maybe we can actually just shrink this down a little bit. Tighten up the... Uh, Interesting. What if we copied and pasted that? And we got rid of this one. What am I missing here? Oh yeah. I forgot I copied and pasted it. Alright. And then we uh, go back here. Get rid of that one. We take this, move it over, have some smaller sort of caves happening here. Do that again. This is where photo bashing gets pretty cool so once you start you know being able to manipulate your existing images into some new and inventive concepts all right that's good enough and maybe we can just add whoops maybe we can just add one more of these to sort of complete the look here but we'll cut off the ones on either side. Just keep it to this one here, and we can actually lower the light value a little bit. Help that sucker blend in. Get a bit more of red. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> this is definitely not what I like completely envisioned when I started this, but I kind of dig it.
All right, and if we really want to, uh, let's see, I'm gonna take this section. Yeah, gotta stretch here. Don't forget to stretch, guys. That's very important. All right, I'm gonna bring this guy down. I don't want that to be uh, lit up totally. Same with this. Let's, let's blend that in a little bit more. I don't know what all, what is all this stuff here? Okay, that's from that. What is this? This impurity. It is deleted. Well, there's a lot of it out here, isn't there? Some weird stuff going on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna trouble myself with that. Uh, let's get rid of those. Yeah, you're gonna find, you know, here and there, there are some little blips and things that you have to take care of, but just sort of cleaning things up a little bit. Can I actually use this once again to create some shadows? this rock oh a little chipmunk hey buddy all right St stay focused this rock is not doing it for me guys I'm gonna have to 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 cut that edge off it's forming a weird relationship with the building behind it. All right, I'm gonna mess with this edge a little bit. We haven't really created that path that we uh, envisioned earlier. Quite yet, I'm actually gonna create a new layer over this. I'm gonna darken this edge up, create a bit of a vignette here. Let's use something a bit more blue. And this, this rock is sticking out like a sore thumb. There are actually some cool things we can do with this. So I'm going to copy and paste it. Let's apply that layer mask in both situations. Now let's take this top one. I'm going to brighten up the value. I'm going to increase the saturation. I know, bear with me. Push it a little bit towards the red. And then for this other one, I'm going to drop those values down so we can create a strong silhouette. Now, use a mask layer to get rid of that top. And now we have some interesting uh, reflected light here. And, oh man. I don't know. There's some weird stuff going on with the lighting and the shadows there, but I'm not... Uh, I'm not going to 
to bother myself with it at the moment. Truthfully, we don't really need that reflective lighting. Let's just merge these together. I'm going to desaturate that again. This is just a silhouette for us. We don't need any other function here. It would be nice to add something else to the foreground to kind of liven that up a little bit. Um, but I'm not going to. Not right now. I am going to fade this rock out a little bit so it blends a little better. Uh, probably adjust this edge. Be a bit more realistic here. Kind of, I think the same with this uh, this back here. Let's edit that edge a little bit, just to make I think a, a more interesting shape at the very least. Alright, now, um, we're going to dial that back a little bit, fog's a little bit aggressive. Um, I want to create some interesting atmosphere though, you know, here's where we can start doing a little bit of uh, painting here. We can use some sort of specialized uh, texture brushes like... Um, you know, I'm kind of holding back, like, there's there's a lot of things I, I instinctually want to paint here, but I'm just sort of focusing on the, the photo elements for now. Uh, but, let's grab a, uh, let's use a little cloud brush here. We can use that to... Hang on, I want to put this between, where's that layer? I probably should have been uh, managing these a little bit better, putting them into groups and so forth, naming them, that's really helpful. All of these are uh, important strategies for For layering stuff, all right, I gotta put this over that one. That's the problem here. I should group, let's see, all of these are part of this structure here. Yeah, group them, all that kind of stuff. If I were really working on this for a longer period of time, I would, um, I would really, um, I would definitely be a bit more organized with all of this. As it is, I'm just going to do some of this, create some cool clouds. Screw it, we can, we can fill this whole area with clouds, and eh, maybe not. <laughs> I just not. Not totally buying that, but we can we can leave some of them in there. Maybe a little bit over here. I'm just kind of like clearly separating out these layers to create some some depth. And of 
course, we're also <clears throat> we're also increasing the scale uh, by doing this. Sometimes it can help, sometimes it doesn't really add anything. You know, you don't, you don't want to just add things for the sake of adding them. Those clouds aren't totally doing it for me, but... Um, I think we've got a pretty good image here. Let's just, uh, you know, one more final touch. Uh, maybe introduce a little bit of foliage here. I'm actually using some of these Evident brushes. Uh, so there's some great specific material brushes here. Foliage. Let's see what this one does for us. Yeah, it's pretty good. that in the, in the ground as well down here get some nice texture give ourselves some some nice edges to work with there and uh, let's see what else we can we can create a few uh, few sort of twigs and sticks and branches and stuff like that. Maybe not right there. It's kind of distracting, but throw one over here. Some branches coming out. Of course, if you really know your trees, now is a good time to, to use that knowledge. I don't really, but <laughs> it's not going to stop me. All right, that's probably good enough. Maybe create a bit of an overall vignette. Hey there, uh, Experiment 3 and Carol. Welcome. Uh, so I haven't really been checking the chat in a while. I've been super laser focused here, so I apologize if I missed anything. Uh, oh my god, what did I just do? I just erased a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, all right, let's try this. Just gonna create a little bit of a vignette here. Keep focus in around our focal area. Honestly, probably gonna clear out some of those, some of this mess here. Just cause. It's a bit hectic. Um, you know what? I do not know what I'm doing there. Oh, I'm painting. Okay. But I'm painting on the 
the, f the image itself and not the mask layer like I'm supposed to. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, I think that's gonna do it for today. Let's flip it. You know, I don't know. It's not, uh, it's not my worst work, not my best, but I hope you guys have, have learned something, you know, from this whole process about, uh, um, you know, using photo textures, using photo bashing. Uh, you know, I really encourage you guys to, to go out and grab some of your own photo references like I did here. Um, actually, there's one more thing maybe we can do to, to help this blend a little bit better. Alright, I think that's looking a little bit better. Um, yeah, I hope this was uh, informative for you. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope you guys learned something. And uh, I encourage you to, uh, to give this a try on your own. Uh, just to mess around a little bit, you know. Can't hurt. Uh, and uh, so thank you all for, for joining me once again uh, for this week's live stream. Um, I keep going back in and adjusting things. I might come back to this one actually, but um, oh, maybe I just need to drop the saturation. Mm, that might do it. Okay. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Of course, uh, leave a comment if you have any requests for future video content. Uh, of course, I always take those into consideration when I do these streams and uh, keep an eye out for a uh, new video I release on Wednesday. Um, if you want to check out any information about my mentorship program or the brush pack uh, that I actually did not use very much in this video, but which I usually use quite a bit more when I'm actually painting, uh, you can check those out in the uh, description below. So I hope you'll have a great uh, rest of your weekend or, uh, or a great week and I will catch you next